All right, everybody, here we are. And I say here we are because... Duna, there it is. <laughs> Duna is right there. Now, uh, and then if you look right next to it, little Ike. Yep. Um, I say here we are because we, you know, of course, we're here. Um, another thing is I'm hoping this video will look better than the last one, although I did promise everybody a high-definition video, and it was recorded and uploaded in 1080p. Uh, compression. Initial video compression caused massive... Ew. It caused massive issues when it was recording, or when it was um, being encoded. And so what ended up happening was I lost a lot of quality, so I think it even turned out to look less good, less well, worse than, I guess, um, than my 720p videos, and I do apologize for that. Uh, but on the plus side, I was able to work it out a little bit. If I record uncompressed video, takes up a ton of hard drive space, I know, but if I could record uncompressed video and then um, and then code it that way, which probably take a little while, but encode it that way and I, I change the encoding settings. Um, it should come out looking pretty crisp, pretty pretty much like what I'm seeing here. Um, it may only be in 720p, I'm not sure, but it'll look much better than the last two sets at least, and that's what I'm really going for. So, so you guys, when you look at this, you can actually see what I'm seeing um, rather than garbage, um, which is what you were seeing before. Um, now, as I said, we did set up a burn. We have uh, nine hours until we get there, and I just flipped ourselves around. Um, if we take a look at our map, this is what our burn's going to do, and I was able to get... Look at that. It wasn't perfect. I did have to alter that slightly from out here, but I figured that I'd do that um, before I started recording just for the sake of looking awesome, and here it is. So we're pretty stable, pretty even, not great, but pretty good. Um, because of that, we're going to st stop our burn here. That's 987.2 meters a second for that. Um, but in order to do that, we have to get there. So let's go ahead and fast forward really quick. And I'm going to keep an eye on that clock down there. And while you guys go ahead and watch Duna come in, flying in, there it comes. Whoa! And we're going to just barely miss Ike. Look at that. Look at that. That was hard, by the way, to do to get that. Because I had an Ike encounter from way out there in space. Um... I actually had to come in farther out from the planet than not because I kept intercepting Ike. So we did have an Ike encounter for a very short period and it looks like I almost got it again but I was able to avoid it luckily. Okay, so we are coming in, 29 minutes left. Let's go ahead and speed that up again. Lots and lots of eclipses going on. Very pretty of course, although in very high speed if, uh, as well. But. Uh, Thems is the brakes. Okay, now let's let's go ahead and well, no, this is about a good speed. This is about a good speed. All right, we're gonna start burning now because this is a nuclear rocket and it is 20 seconds and we have like oh, a minute and 47 on the burn itself, so not bad. Um, that's actually very pretty. I hope this comes out really well in the recording because I like the way that looks. <laughs> I like the way that's looking. It's looking very nice. Um. Mostly it's the, the numbers, I think, that I want you guys to see. Just to show you why I'm burning when I do and burning when I do. Because if these numbers down here are hard for me to read in full high definition with all the pixels in the right place, then they probably look like terrible garbage to everybody else, and that's no good. Um, but once again, just burning slow. And what I really want to do here is I want to have enough fuel left to pick our, our drop location, to pick our landing location, because I have one in mind. I have one in mind. Um, but in order to get it, uh, we have to be close to the planet, close enough to the planet for our... Actually, we don't need the protractor anymore. Um, close enough to the planet for uh, the mapper to pick us up. And that would be Duna here. Oh, well, we're burning, 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 and we're almost out of fuel. That's okay. And then, uh, can it see our current position? Um, I just turned it on. I don't know where we are. I'm about to run out of burn, so give me a second. Oh, yeah, it can. I see it there. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And woohoo! Look at that! Look at us go! Whoa, 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 we're a little unstable. A little unstable. Okay, keep burning. Slow it down a little bit. And. Oh, that'll be good enough. So we're at 16 meters a second. Our burn's a little off center. Six six forty one by four forty four. I can live with that. Now I want where I wanted to land is I don't think it's here on the list. But where I wanted to land is if you take a look 
Hey, turn on the anomalies. Now, we're right here. So where I actually want to land is over here somewhere in the dark. But where we want to land is there we have a kind of a Bermuda Triangle of anomalies going on. But this big, great swath here is all at sea level. It's all really low to the ground. And um, since these are all mountaintops and everything, I was thinking that we could land right in this little groove. And I say that because that's at sea level, or pretty close to sea level. It's about, you know, it's pretty close. Not perfect. This is more sea level, these, but those take us really, really far away from where we want to be. Um, this will also get us right between two anomalies out of three, and that's not bad. And then, of course, we can, like, go north or east or something, or fly over there. We'll do something. We'll figure out a way to go over here, but this is the anomaly that's going to be out of place for us. But I do want to land, like, right in this crevice, and that gives us this access to this huge, huge, like, dust bowl. <laughs> But in order to do that, we are going to have to come around on the light side of the planet. So we are, because I'm not going to land in the dark, even with this little guy, you know, lighting up the, the night sky. Speaking of which, speaking of which, we'd probably be using a little bit of battery power. Let me, let me check our batteries. 500 by 500, and how's our little guy in there doing? It's hard to get a reading on him because, of course, all the lights are in the way. That's okay, it's a good design. Five out of five. Okay, so it looks like we're okay because of our rocket engine and because we weren't using that much fuel to begin with. Oh, yeah, and I have the solar panels out here. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I don't have to extend those. Aha, see? I completely forgot that I added those. Redundant systems. I told you we're going to have redundant systems. Don't even need to use these. We have those. Sweet. Okay, so, um, I don't know how long it's going to take us to get on the light side, but let's take a look at the map. Um, oh, yeah, with the dark side. I mean, if I put the sun behind it I can yeah I can barely see it so we're not even going to be able to do our um our map thing our de orbit burn thing until we get that on the light side so I'm going to pause recording here and we will get back or I will come back to you guys when we are in a position to do our de orbit burn or at least to map our de orbit burn to see if we can get it right where we want it so I will see you guys there Okay, everybody, here we are, um, back on the map screen, I'm afraid, but where we want to land is right there, and that's what we needed this map for, is we needed to figure out where we wanted to land, and how to get ourselves there, and how much burn it's going to take to do so. So let's see what we can see. Well, that, that's good, it's only a 351 meter per second burn to get ourselves to where we want to go. Um, only downside, of course, being that the planet rotates. So let's rotate the planet a little bit. I guess if we really, really, really wanted to do it, we'd say right like this, maybe, and then kind of tilt ourselves a little bit, like that, and then that way we come in roughly where we want it to be, but with the tilt of the planet, our current distance out, and everything else, that should be about where we're going to put it, right? I mean, that would make sense to me, I think. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, um, but that's what this is all about, so let's go ahead and turn ourselves about. Now that we're so much lighter, we don't need RCS. Um, actually, speaking of which, I think I d dumped the RCS <laughs> with the uh, nuclear rocket, which is now flying out towards the sun, by the way. All right. And so that's seven minutes until we hit that deorbit burn. Shouldn't take us very long at all to do our deorbit burn, I hope. Um, we'll actually take one last look at the map screen while we're on the way. Make sure our orbit isn't too bad okay that, yeah that's right in the middle of that uh that little swath there right oh yeah that should be fine i say that because i know i'm gonna hit atmosphere i do know that but at the same time i also know that uh, the planet's rotating in the opposite direction that we're currently heading so um it's uh, hopefully it's a math thing <laughs> where we basically fight um whoa okay we just got caught um very disconcerting there for a second. All right, let's slow it down. All right, where is that? Fairly close to where we wanted to be, as a matter of fact. All right, we may have to do some additional maneuvering, but for the moment, that is it. That is where we want to be, and um, I think it's below. Ah, it's below us. Okay. It changed our our center there a little bit. So let's go ahead and come on in. Actually, we're heading this direction, so let's look that way. I, I like it when I'm coming in from the top. It makes me feel a little bit better. Ooh, maybe we're not heading in fast enough. Is the planet rotating too much? The uh, planet's rotating a bit much. Let's, um... 
Let's go ahead and deorbit burn a little bit more. And I know, I know, I know we're going to be hitting atmosphere. I know. But we have a lot of fuel to work with. And those are all good things. So let's do that just a little bit. I actually think we should do it this way. Let's see how that works for us. Okay, that's bringing us down and in, yeah. All right, a little bit closer. So we'll just do that a few more times, I think, if we have to. So let's go ahead and come on in again. Oh, that's going to be a nice landing. Nice landing. A good start, I say. All right. Ooh, slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> um, what are we at? 900 meters a second? Oof, not great, but we're at 70,000 feet. Okay, we're going to check our landing zone. Oh, our landing zone is almost perfect. It's going to be like right in that area. All right, so for the purposes of this, let's go ahead and... Um, you know, I just realized, let's, yeah, let's reverse those. I may still need to be, I, I may need to slow myself down via my rocket, via our engine, before I release my parachute, or after, you know, oh yeah, before I, <laughs> before I release the rocket, but after I open the parachute. So we may want to, to work on that a little bit. All right, we're just going to kind of eyeball this a little bit, I think. We're not going to do anything spectacular. Um, 30,000 feet, not great. Not sure when the atmosphere starts. Soon, I hope. We're, we're going to start kind of slowing ourselves down a lot, I think. Surface, there we go. Well, we're at surface and the atmosphere is thickening. That gives us 800 meters a second and slowing. 12,000 feet, uh, 10,000 feet. Okay, we're really, really, really gonna have to slow ourselves down. Um, might decide to pop my rocket soon. I think. 300. Okay, we'll go ahead and release that, and that should help. Whoa, 200, 100. There we go, that's nice, that's nice. 60. We'll, we'll slow that down because that way we're not fighting the, uh, the system as much. Oh. Okay, 40. <laughs> 40 is okay. We should open around 5. Whoop, whoop. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Now that should slow us down enough, so then at this point we do this. Bye bye. We're going to land right on top of it, though, unfortunately. Hopefully it detonates when it hits the ground. Okay, so we do have some debris we're going to have to um, clear up, I think. But since we did just um, lose those, we're only going 7 meters a second. How much battery power? I mean, we're not really using any at all, are we? Um, oh yeah, we're using very little at all. We'll open up our solar panels here in a second. We're not going to do that just this moment. We're going to wait until we actually touch down. So here we come. Coming down. Kind of nice in a little crevice in the valley. It's not a... Well, yeah, it's kind of a nice place. Maybe a little island-ish. Okay, let's hopefully... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it looks like we roll a little bit. Hopefully we can roll ourselves back up. Come on, little guy. Hmm. Well, that was unceremonious. <laughs> Is there a way to get you back up on your feet? I think he might be top heavy. Let's see. That's that way. Oh, there we go. There we go. I don't want to damage anything. <laughs> kind of rolling a little bit. Okay, maybe that'll work for us. Oop. Oop. Okay. Well, it's going to take a little bit to get it up on its feet, and I really don't want to break anything. So, although it was a little bit of an unceremonious landing, if I can get it up on its feet, we should be able to do fine. Um, I know some people might suggest that I open the solar panel and push myself up. Might be a thought, but it's kind of a dangerous thought. So we'll go ahead and give that a shot if nothing else works. Um, so I'm going to pause here, and uh, then I'll be right back, and hopefully I'll be right back when we're upright. All right, everybody. Just got us upright. Took a little bit of flopping. If you notice, we moved about... 10, 20 feet over here to the uh, 
to the old mech chip pod. Um, I was able to try to use the solar panels a couple of times. Very cute, very funny, but I was very concerned that they might break off. And because of that, I did not want it on, on record, unfortunately. But nothing broke off, so now I feel kind of silly that I left you guys out. Um, but at the same time, you know, can't have everything perfect. Um, so yeah, we're upright. Took a little bit of work. We're on a little bit of a, a slope, but that's okay. We are not going to change it. This is our beacon. This is our point. This is our place. And here it is. Our first activation on Duna. Dun dun dun. Um, since it's not night, I don't know how bright this thing is. But actually, if that little white spot is any in, in any indication, yeah, look at that. It still, it still shows up as a little white dot down there. I mean, I can see it as a little white dot. I'm not sure if you guys can see it as the same thing. But I like that. That's a good landing spot. That's a good place. Would have only been better if we could have gotten it in there, but even that would have been crazy. So I like this spot. This is a good spot. This is going to be the, the place of our new home. Um, so yeah, I think this video is actually really, really short considering. Hmm. If that's the case, we may have to add to this episode. But I'm going to go ahead and clean up the mech jeb debris here. And, uh... I'm not sure what to do next. I mean, I know what I want to do next for the episode, of course, or episodes, of course, but uh, I'm not sure what to do next for this video, whether to end it here or to... because uh, it is very, very short, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, so for now, I would like to thank you all for joining me for Kilobyte Short on this uh, Kerbal Space Adventures. Oh, that's... Well, I, ah, see? I was telling you guys, hey, well, I don't know what to do next. I know what to do next. I forgot. We just landed this thing. We gotta rename it. It's not a probe anymore. Hell no, it's not a probe anymore. It's a base. That's right, it's a base. Now, we called it the Rust Rider because out there in space, that's... Excuse me, that's what it was doing. It was flying through space, you know, the Rust Rider. But now... Now we're gonna call it the Rider's Cove. That's right, because we picked this little cove area for that reason. Um, I could call it Rust Cove or, you know, Rust Rider's Cove, but uh, Rider's Cove is better. Um, I think it's better. I like it. I like the sound of it. Very piratey feel to it. I don't know. But we'll call it the Rider's Cove, I think. Um, if anyone has any suggestions on what they think would be a better name, that's fine. I have no problem renaming it, but I'm not going to rename it more than maybe once. So everybody get together on a single name or something, because I don't mind seeing like 20, 30, 40 names. That's great. Um, if I decide to rename it, I will pick one, or you guys can like upvote one, absolutely upvote one. Um... But once again, same naming convention issues, uh, or same naming convention requests as I had with the uh, uh, Bob service station. Try to keep it clean, try to keep it fun, uh, and, you know, just, I guess, try to be mature. I mean, I know I'm I'm no pillar of, <laughs> of greatness when it comes to that aspect, but still, you know, just a little bit. But um, I'll take suggestions. But for now, it's going to be called Rider's Cove, because that's what I chose. And if you guys think there's a better name for it, absolutely speak up. And I'll see what I can do to, to maybe come to a conclusion like I did with Big Bob. So I can like put people's suggestions together and get a close fit that fits better with uh, how I feel the naming convention should be. So once again, as I was saying before, once again, I would like to thank you for joining me for Killer by Short on this episode of Kerbal Space Adventures. And in the next episode... Well, part three, I guess, but part two of our base. So it's going to be piece two, part three. Ah, super excited, aren't you? I know I am. I'll see you guys in the next video.